Well, I'm not going to tell you a lot about the spirit of Caleb. The important thing is you can get a hold of a Bible, look it up in Numbers and in the book of Joshua around chapter 15. I think it's much better if over this series of 12 programs, we find out more about the spirit of Caleb. But the thing we're starting with is a very modern Caleb who's here with us in the studio. So welcome to my first guest, uh, David Hathaway, founder, president of Eurovision, uh, who has almost directly come back from Odessa. David, tell us about what you as a modern Caleb are doing. Then we'll look at how you got there and then we'll go on to some other things. But now over to you. Well, yes, thank you. Thank you, David. It's good to be on the program and I want to encourage you in this. Yes, I, I understand what you're talking about with the spirit of Caleb, but uh, there's, there's one thing about both Caleb and, of course, Joshua, the two faithful of the 12 spies, that really encourages me is that they saw in the Promised Land both the blessings and the difficulties, but it didn't deter them because they said, if God is with us, nothing is impossible. And that's the spirit that we need in the church today and amongst believers, whether they're old or young. And I'll tell you one thing that's quite interesting. Uh, in the prophecy from Joel, the, the prophet says, your young men shall see visions and your old men shall dream dreams. Now, I often tell people, I can tell with believers how old you are. Because if you're dreaming, you're old, even though you might appear to be only young. Uh, if you've got a vision, you're young, even if you might appear to be old. And so often today, we're faced with the fact, David, and I mean, you and I are, you know, we're, we're outside our 20s, I'm sure, just a just little a bit. bit. Yeah. Uh, I mean, my clock stopped at 35, so I mean, I'm okay. But the fact is this, that so often today, um, the young people are dreaming. They're dreaming about the future, dreaming about what they might do, but they don't have the vision. And it's left to older people like you and I to have the real vision of what God can do and get out and run with the vision and put it into action. And the important thing is the action. And I'm a great believer, David, that we've got to do something and act on it. And that's why, yes, I, I just come back from Odessa, but Odessa is only a small part of what I'm doing because in April we had the major project, and we'll show you some little extracts from that in a moment, when we really took Russia by storm. Uh, the one in Odessa, well, people don't really understand how much we can achieve, but um, I first was in the Odessa area 12 years ago when God really brought the beginning of uh, Holy Ghost revival to the Ukraine. I would go down, I went down four times in 1992 to a muddy field in a little village about 30 miles from Odessa. And we would have up to 20,000 people coming from all over Russia, even in those days. I mean, that was just uh, in the early days of the breakup of communism. But people would come from the far side of Siberia. They came from all over the Ukraine. They came from over Russia to those meetings. And uh, there I was, just a, a, a young man, you see, still. I mean, that's 12 years ago. I mean, I was still in my, my youth. I mean, I've hardly got out of it now. And uh, we saw the power of God come. Yeah. Uh, it wasn't so much the unbelievers. It was the believers who came. And the power was tremendous. Now, many of the pastors that we've got in Russia that we work with and in the Ukraine really at those meetings made the decision to come out and be Caleb's, if you want, and get up and do the job for God. And uh, for me to be back 12 years later, but in the city of Odessa was powerful. Powerful because all the churches came together we had a big sports hall. We had thousands of people. And it's wonderful because every night thousands of people are repenting and we're seeing powerful miracles of healing. And I mean, this is only a few days ago. And um, 
uh, the, the last night, the Spirit of God was so powerful in healing. We had three people testifying live on television that God had healed them instantly of cancer. There was one young man in his early 20s, and he'd got, I think it's osteomyelitis of his right leg. They were going to amputate his leg. Uh, he was in terrible pain. He came in. I don't know where he came from. He came in, but God just healed him. God delivered him. He was jumping up and down on this terribly injured leg, which God had just healed. Now, that's what happened. But the exciting thing is that although we had just a few thousand people in the, in the sport hall, we were broadcasting that program on the national TV channel to the whole of the Ukraine. And we were reaching uh, for an hour each night a potential audience of 50 million people. Now that's tremendous. Uh, we were reaching the whole of the Ukraine because I say we were on the state channel. Mm. Now that's what God is doing and that's what God is doing in Europe because that's Europe right now. Shall we see a bit of it on uh, a clip? Yes, can, let's, can we have, let's a clip? have a look. Yes. Now you're going to see something very powerful here because uh, I want to show you. Now I'm speaking to you directly from the very center of Moscow because behind me you can see the Kremlin its towers and its walls. But I don't only come to Moscow. I go all over Russia, to the north, to the Far East, to Siberia. We can achieve a million potential participants of a million people who have the opportunity to know the truth about the When we first started our ministry, uh, we could go out uh, with a guitar uh, in the street and sing. And uh, try to win this couple of people, but today we can reach millions of people through the TV. God called me to come to Russia many years ago. But you know, many people start something and they don't finish. What God has called me to start, God wants me to finish. But by using TV, we can bring the gospel into every home and millions of people can hear it will show you what God is actually doing in Russia today. You see, God has given me a vision how to reach this nation. And so what we're doing is we're filming every evangelistic meeting and we're broadcasting these meetings live on television, not satellite, because not many people in Russia have, can watch satellite, but we're watching them, we're broadcasting on the ordinary TV channels that everybody in Russia can see. Now, this is so important because here in this nation, under communism, they set up a system whereby for propaganda purposes, they could make live broadcasts and could reach the nation. Today, we are tapping into this system and using it to reach the whole of Russia. We gratefully recall the meetings we had in Russia last year with Dave Hathaway. These were unforgettable days and meetings. Thousands of people attended. Hundreds were healed. Thousands of people who came to the Crusades were saved by Jesus Christ, they received new life, they were born again. So David, um, it's obvious that you have this tremendous concern for Russia. God, I think, gave you that vision. And do you see something in the timing of it? Isn't there, wasn't there a prophecy about something happening in Russia, something to do with Hudson Taylor. Well, yes, this is, uh, this is about 130 years ago uh, that Hudson Taylor had a, a remarkable prophecy. As most people will know, he was actually missionary to China. 
This was before communism, was before two world wars. And yet he was back on furlough speaking in a church, probably just a small church here in England. And in the middle of talking about China, he stopped, he was quiet. And then God gave him this remarkable vision. And in the vision, it was a prophetic vision, he saw firstly, and remember this is before the turn even of the, 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 the 1900s, this was in 1800 and something. And he saw two world wars, he also saw the rise of communism, then he saw beyond that. And the thing that touched my heart so much was God showed him that in the last days before the return of Christ, there would be one last great revival, the greatest revival the world has ever seen, but it would begin in Russia. Now, you know, when you, when you realize that two world wars were to come, that communism was to dominate a third of the world, and I mean, I grew up under the threat of communism, and we, 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 we were afraid that communism would totally dominate the world. But yet, he saw this revival coming. Now, it was partly because of that that God took me into Russia. But of course, the other thing is, and this is interesting, uh, because uh, 40 years ago, and I've been going to Russia for almost 40 years, more, uh, certainly more than 30, 35. But exactly 40, 40 years ago this year, I was an evangelist in England. I was pastor of a church, but I got cancer in my throat. And in praying for the miracle of healing, uh, I prayed three months and I wasn't healed. Going back to the doctors, the doctors finally giving me two days before they were going to remove my vocal cord. And I cried out to God and I prayed the most dangerous prayer because I said, Lord, if you want me to go to Russia and leave England, then work the miracle and heal this cancer. And that night, God completely healed that cancer. I went to the doctors the next day. They were absolutely astonished, couldn't believe what had happened because they'd only seen me three days before. And it was because of that that I began my work in going to Russia. But I mean, that was the 1960s when communism was tough. I didn't realize what God would lead me into. But God did very clearly in the, in the 1980s. Uh, you, many of you know I was, of course, eventually in prison for a year in the communist countries. God delivered me. That's 30 years ago. Then God began to speak to me 20 years ago about what he was going to do to fulfill those prophecies. And not only the prophecies of Hudson Taylor, but you know, the thing I love is I love the Word of God, you know. I love the Bible. I don't like to just call this a Bible because it just means a book. I believe that this is the Word of the living God. It's powerful. And I mean, if you're talking about Caleb, uh, if you're talking about the things of God, it all begins in here. This is where it is. This is the fact. If God says it, God does it. And you know, as believers, we've got to echo that spirit of a God and a Father who whatever promise he makes, whatever he says, I want to tell you, David, and I want to say this on my life before God, God always keeps his promise. And when God actually revealed to me uh, from the scripture that, uh, yes, Moses said in Deuteronomy chapter 4, talking about Caleb, Deuteronomy chapter 4, he said, the greatest miracle ever seen on the face of the earth was a miracle when God delivered his people from the land of Egypt. But then you turn to Jeremiah 16, and Jeremiah as a prophet says, there will come a day when you will forget that miracle in the light of the miracle that God is going to do in Russia. Now that's in Jeremiah 16, the land of the north. The land of the north. Now, we know that that's partly fulfilled actually in bringing the people, the, 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 the Russian Jews, back into their land. And yes, we have been a little bit involved in that. I don't want to talk too much about that side of it. But no, the fact is, what I saw was that the, the prophecy of the scripture was that God would work more powerful miracles in Russia than he did in Egypt.